Belle was as good as her word. She waited outside the store obediently when I went inside, like a puppy collar to a bollard. Her request was also humble, much to my relief, and easily fulfilled too. An ice cream, a cheap one, only 60p. The kind little kids like, made of milk. So, a milk pop or whatever they're called. In the UK. Belle sits on the swing once more and I, though I don't know how, find myself sat next to her. My carton of milk sat on my lap. It leaks coolness against my right eye. And I feel my skin going numb through my jeans, but I make no motion of moving. Man, he's awkward, isn't he? I'm too busy watching Belle. She unwraps the ice cream tenderly, divesting the frozen treat of its wrappings as though it's something precious, and hands the rubbish over to me. Here you go, present for you. Thank you, my lady, much obliged. She giggles, brushing a few strands of hair away from her mouth and surveys her prize. It's a pale white color, vanilla, and shaped like a cylinder. Oh, I know what's coming now. Now, this is definitely a sexual innuendo, isn't it? But why an ice cream of all things? I'm easy to please. I didn't want to burden you with any extreme requests like rare jewels or designer clothes. I'm thankful for it. My budget wouldn't stretch that far. And I doubt the co-op stocks, stocks stuff like that. Jeez. Then doesn't this work out well for all of us? I guess. I don't know. It's a bit cold out for ice cream, don't you think? I don't mind. I like experiencing different kind of sensations. Mm. Isn't that the best thing about being alive? Okay, it just seems kind of childish. Is there anything wrong with being childish? Isn't that the best way to live life? Being excited by the small things with wonder and curiosity? Alright Alice, alright. Her name is Belle. You fucked her. She giggles, sticking her tongue out at me. Sides, ice cream isn't that childish. Not when you lick it like a... like a dick. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is when it's a mini milk. Oh, you'd be surprised, hehehe. <laughs> and then she begins sucking on it seductively. Oh, fuck me, I knew it. They even had a CG for that. With a coquettish little giggle, Belle dips her head and drags her tongue along the length of the ice cream. No normal pills. person eats the ice cream like that. <laughs> oh. Nearly, nearly on the edge, Robin. I blink. My cheeks turn pink despite the cold. Of course. I should have known. Why didn't I guess? It must be because of Mally. I associate this particular brand of ice cream so entirely with my five-year-old daughter. She would have lived on this stuff if I'd let her, yet I failed to realize it could be used for other, less innocent purposes. Okay, just a second. Your daughter is five year years old, and she doesn't love you anymore, and she behaves like a fucking emo, and she surfs the internet late at night until midnight or something you definitely did something wrong robin you definitely did now i feel foolish mm, tasty tasty ice cream <laughs> bell drags her tongue across the shaft of the ice cream a couple of times her eyes half lidded every once in a while she moans softly seductively the noises she makes are soft barely audible but i can still catch them Maybe because I'm in a state of hyper-awareness myself. <laughs> All of a sudden, the sensations about me feel even more acute. The wind through my hair, my feet on the floor, the carton of milk pressed against my thigh. I shiver. W -w what do you think you're doing? Belle lifts her head, a strand of saliva connecting her pale pink lips with the side of the ice cream. It quivers semi-transparent for a few moments like a gossamer spider's web before it snaps. Isn't it obvious? I'm trying to seduce you, Mr. Hawkins. B but why? I don't know. I just like attention, I guess. Just so she's an, a real attention whore. I love that. Well, you have my attention. You have it, so you don't need to keep doing... Doing that! Oh? She giggles, her eyes half lidded. It's a weird expression. Is this too stimulating for you? A little light ice cream petting? <laughs> I just didn't expect it, that's all. Oh, your cheeks are turning red. How cute. I'm not cute. So I'll definitely have to put a warning in front of every fucking episode now. Shit. YouTube won't like that. Whatever. I don't care what YouTube likes and what they don't. I beg 
Oh, it's spell, sorry. I beg to differ. When you react like that, how can I stop myself? It's only an ice cream, but you're already getting so head up. Hehe. <laughs> head up? Is this a typo? She used to eat those by the handful, my Maddie. In the summer, they'd melt and she'd end up with sticky ice creamy goo about her cheeks and I'd have to wipe it away. Um, you don't want to think of that right now. Seriously, what are you doing, Robin? Belle's cheeks are getting similarly sticky, but the effect it has on me is completely different. Thank fucking god. Maddie was just a little girl, my dear daughter. Belle, on the other hand... She's a different matter altogether. Her own cheeks are glazed a soft coral pink. Her dark eyelashes tremble. She moans softly about the ice cream as she takes it deeply into her mouth, her lips pursed, her throat tensing. Throbbing. Shit. <laughs> oh, I can relate to that guy. Not only by name, but by... Not quite by nature, but I guess by what he's experiencing. I would be pretty fucking awkward as well, I think. Alright, that really is enough. I get to my feet in a hurry, appending the carton of milk as I do so. Are you holding it in front of your crotch so she doesn't see? Because this would be such a good anime cliche, wouldn't it? It hits the grass with a soft foot. The white milk inside it sloshes. Oh, so it's a metaphor for something white um, sloshing around, I guess. Fuck. <laughs> hmm. Belle draws the ice cream from her lips and blinks up at me, her big, her eyes big, bright, staring. She's enjoying herself. I can tell she's enjoying herself, that little devil. What's wrong, Robin? Was that too much for you? I breathe heavily, my chest rising and falling beneath my coat. I can feel my toes as they curl against my socks, my thighs as they rub against the denim of my trousers. And something else, too. Shit. Oh my, maybe it really was too stimulating after all. I'm sorry. That gives me a look of concern, though I doubt it's very sincere. If it was, she wouldn't give that poor abused ice cream another covered lick. Lick, 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 lick. You must have, <laughs> you must have it tough, tough, Robin. Getting so woke up about something so small. <laughs> Your wife mustn't treat you very well, if you know what I mean. I do. Right, I can do without the insinuations about my sex life. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, if you're having a bit of a dry spell, <laughs> I wouldn't mind giving you a helping. Okay, well... I cut off my voice a little louder than it should be. It sticks in my throat, though. I cough. I'm afraid that if I let her finish that sentence, I might be tempted to take her up on the offer. I'm a weak man, and I can only take so much temptation before I cave in. Man, <laughs> it is true my relationship with Sally has been rather dry lately, as Belle put it, but I don't know if I'd feel better even if we were having sex on a regular basis. I don't think it would make us like each other more. Mm. It could help, but it probably won't. She probably can't bring herself to be intimate with me, not when she suspects me of cheating on her with Arabella sodding weight. Well, maybe one way to keep your man away from other women is to make him yours, but that's just me thinking. Obviously I'm thinking with the mind of a, of a man, so could be wrong, but okay. I guess I can't blame her. I wouldn't want to be intimate with anyone who had slept with Arabella Wade Eater, but you haven't, for fuck's sake. You haven't slept with her. <laughs> you don't have to sympathize with your wife just because she's jealous. Fuck me. If only Sally knew the truth. She does. For fuck's sake. You're a retard, Robin. Arabella Wade doesn't hold a candle to Belle. Yeah, well, it was nice seeing you, Belle, but I really should be going back home now. Belle raises an eyebrow, glancing at the front of my pants. Like that? Oh god, please don't tell me I have to cut something out of this game. I didn't know Steam sold these games without an extra patch. And I guess they don't, I hope, at least. Well, uh, please no close-up of my pants. Okay, I glance away, my cheeks red. That might be a bit of a problem, but the walk back home, not to mention the mountain of guilt, should take care of it. This is all your fault, Belle. I already told you, I'd be more than willing to take responsibility. 
don't tempt me. But that's what I want. Don't say things like that. It's... it's improper. Bell shrugs. Okay, you're the boss. I just want to thank you in whatever way I can. That's what I'm here for. So... Pardon my language, but she wants to be a cocksleeve or something? <laughs> right, sure. I sigh, running a hand through my hair. I think I'm starting to get a headache. And immediately I'm regretting saying what I said <laughs> earlier. <laughs> I shouldn't use language like that in my videos. I'm sorry if I went too far. I'll try to be nicer to you next time. Just going to be a next time? He's still awkward. Of course, I was thinking you must get pretty bored at work, so maybe I could, you know, under your table. You're not going to eat anything at me erotically when I'm at work. There'll be children around. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sure I can think of something. I can hardly wait. Emphasis on hardly, you know. I mean for it to sound sarcastic, but sarcasm is a little difficult given the bulge in my trousers and my genuine desire to see her again. I've only known her for two days, and she confuses me. And I don't really understand what she is or what she wants, but... I feel like I already understand her better than I understand my own wife. You don't understand shit, Robin. Let's be honest, the only thing you understand is the fucking bulge in your pants. Hey Belle, I'm curious. Yes, what is it? How do you like to take your coffee? I don't know why the question comes to me, it just does. It feels wrong, somehow, that I know how Sally likes hers, milk and sugar, when I don't know Belle's. No, it isn't wrong. One of them is your wife, the other one is a freaky cat girl that you met two days ago. <laughs> hmm, coffee, huh? It's been a while since I had that, but... Belle ponders, pressing a finger against her lower lip. I think I like it black. So, no, I won't make a joke about that. <laughs> ha, figures. It goes well with her heart. Doesn't make any sense, because she doesn't seem bitter or something. <laughs> hey, Sally. I stand at the threshold of, of the living room, unsure whether I should step inside or not. Do I dare? Why am I feeling so anxious? Is it because of my rapidly deteriorating relationship with Sally, or is it something else? Guilt? Oh, let's have a flashback to that scene, shall we? I don't even need to close my eyes to remember the soft moans Belle made as she let her tongue trail ac across the length of her ice cream. Her cheeks were flushed and her eyelashes trembled, her head bobbing back and forth. <laughs> Though only slightly. <laughs> oh, it's too bad it didn't animate that. I shift, trying to drag my mind out of the past and into the present. I don't need these kinds of distractions right now. I'm meant to be with Sally. But my mind is miles and miles away. I bought the milk. Do you, uh, do you still want a coffee? I know what Sally, Sally is going to say before she opens her mouth to say it. You took too long! Oh, wow, I really knew it. And what took you so long? Where were you? What can I say? The good old fashioned something came up excuse? It wouldn't be entirely wrong, no matter which way you choose to interpret it. I I'm sorry, I just caught up looking at the moon. It really is a pretty night tonight. <laughs> looking at the moon? Whatever you say, Robin. I'll admit, it's not one of my better excuses. It's the truth. I just wanted a bit of fresh air, that's all. Man, how can you spill your spaghetti like that? Fuck me. You're, you're really bad. <laughs> Why? Is the air in here not good enough for you? It isn't when Sally glares at me like that. It makes me feel short of breath. Like I'm stranded on an alien planet. This is supposed to be my house. I pay for half the mortgage. Why should I have to feel so uncomfortable in my own home? Come off it, Sal. Nothing happened. There wasn't enough time for anything to happen. I was only gone 20 minutes. More like half an hour. And what do you suggest I was doing in that time? What can a man do in half an hour? Oh, I'm sure you know. Sally sniffs. I don't know. It just seems suspicious. Suspicious? What's so suspicious about it? I've got the milk like I promised. You sure you don't want a drink? I'm not in the mood anymore. I'm tired. 
I would go to bed. Ugh. I thought she might say that. It's what I've been hearing in the bedroom for the last two months. Oh, it only makes sense that her general lethargy would extend to the living room too. Sally gets to her feet, depositing one of the cushions she was cradling back onto the sofa and gives me a withering look. You done goofed, Robin. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Good night. And just for good measure, you done goofed. <laughs> I'm not sure how, but she even manages to make that sound like an accusation. Right. Good night. Uh, sleep well, Sally Patty. Fuck you. <laughs> but she doesn't reply. She brushes, brushes past me, our shoulders bumping for the briefest of brief seconds. But that's all. Man, that's rude. Isn't it? It's almost as though the mere thought of touching me makes her cringe. How can your relationship be so fucked up, really? May 13th. Thursday. So tomorrow, I guess. Or rather, today now. The next day, Dawn's in a similar state of silence. Melly rushes off to school before I finish shaving in the bathroom mirror. She's fucking five years old. How can she be so elusive? My fingers slip when I hold a razor, then I cut myself. It's only a shallow cut, but it takes me by surprise. I swear under my breath. You know what? I don't want to relate to this guy because he's even too retarded to shave himself. <laughs> Sally doesn't comment on it at the breakfast table. Maybe she doesn't notice. Or if she does, she doesn't care. But it stinks like a bitch. <laughs> God. <laughs> We sit there, Sally and I, picking at our cereal like baby birds. We don't say a single thing. The rustle of Sally's newspaper breaks the silence, alongside a steady tick, tick, ticking of the clock. But that's it. We could be in a silent movie, but one of us had misplaced the intertitle cards. My existence feels just as black and white, dull and monotonous. Is this really all there is to life? Sitting at a breakfast table with your wife, whom you used to love, but now you're not sure if you even like. While your teenage daughter tries that fastly to ignore you? If you even like her, I guess. That's definitely a typo. I sigh. Huh. In the quiet kitchen, the noise is almost overwhelming. Nice. Let's go to school. It's so much more fun there. It's lunchtime. I can hear the students. Though when I say students, I really mean children, running around outside in the playing field screaming. I sigh. I don't know how many times I've done that today. Far too many to count. Okay, um, just a quick question. If you know how the school system is in the UK, can a teacher teach a single subject like music? Because in Germany, they have dif different subjects alto altogether. You, you almost never only teach a single subject. You would have something like German or maths on top of it, you know, because there would never be enough enough classes to give a teacher a full-time job with just music. <laughs> um, okay, let's continue. Why do they have to make so much noise? I know it must get dull, sitting in class for hours on end, but the work they do is hardly taxing. They're in primary school. Well, maybe if you think about it with a primary school mind, the work is slightly taxing, you know. Of course, you'd think it would be easy, but fuck me. You're, you're a goddamn idiot, Robin. <laughs> I suppose there's no reasoning with young children. They all like that. No, noisy, raucous, excitable. It's the ones who aren't. The quiet, taciturn ones who sit in corners with their heads bowed and don't clamor for the castanets you have to look out for. I sigh again. You'd think the sound of children in a play would fill me with a certain sense of fatherly fulfillment, but it doesn't. Instead, it's mildly irritating. Yeah, because it's loud as hell right now. And the irritation is becoming less and less mild with every passing moment. The music room juts out of the main school building like an ugly afterthought, a soon known appendage of Frankensteinian origins. You can hear the children more loudly than ever from here. It doesn't help that it's so hot. I feel like I'm going to suffocate. The weather has been particularly merciless lately, scorching in the morning, freezing at night. Are we still in the UK? Because I can't believe there being a scorching weather, but... Okay, maybe it's just me being used to other weather, but okay. Oh well, I'm a grown man. I just have to deal with it. Especially in May. Fuck me, it's, it should be fucking cold still. 
well, not cold, but the, not that hot as, as well, so... I don't usually spend my lunch hour holed up in my classroom like a recluse. Though social anxiety may run in my family... Thank you, Grandma Iris, for passing those unwanted... Alerts? Down to my melee? I don't know that word, sorry. I'm not what you would call shy. Maybe that comes down to experience. You stop being anxious when you get older. Sooner or later you start to realize other people's opinions don't matter all that much. Also, as a teacher, you can't be anxious about around people, can you? Because you're around kids and other teachers all the time. That's what I told Melly once. She replied, her head hanging, her voice muted. Is that why you and Mama are always shouting then? She wasn't trying to get at me. I don't think she was anyway. She was just asking a question. Her voice was even more defeated than a hunched posture. Your kid is five? What the hell did you do wrong? I didn't know how to reply to her. So I didn't say anything. That's a running theme in our relationship. Silence. Guess I know what you did wrong now. <laughs> I wish the kids outside would shut up. It sounds like World War 3 out there. How can I tune the piano like this? Way to sound pretentious. <laughs> it's not like a... Th th <laughs> I'm stumbling over my words now because I can't believe how stupid Robin is becoming slowly but surely. I'm sorry. He's acting like a fucking asshole. It's not like the kids will even appreciate it. If only they actually cared about music. Things might be slightly more bearable then. Unfortunately, they, much like everybody else in the world to be honest, seem to think music's a dull subject. A joke. Like religious education, I guess. <laughs> Not even five-year-olds take me seriously. Oh well, that's part and parcel of being a music teacher. At least I don't teach RE. Yeah, there we have it. For fuck's sake. Even RE is important. Every fucking subject is important. It all teaches you something for life. Except for music. Fuck music. <laughs> I continue to fiddle with the inner workings of the piano. It's a battered old thing that's been at the school even longer than I have. Tuning it always takes ages. It's like a battle of wits. Man versus music. I'd have better luck trying to hack into the Kremlin. We really, really need a new piano. I've told the headmistress this enough times, but she just shrugs off my concerns. Says there isn't enough room in the budget for such frivolous overspending. Frivolous? Okay, sure. You try teaching music with one barely functional piano and see how that goes. 99% of the time, it doesn't. No wonder everybody thinks music is a joke. I think it's a joke too, but not a very funny one. Not for me. Why, fancy seeing you here. I know who it is. Oh. Again, already on the edge of coming. <laughs> I lift my head, wiping my brow with the back of my arm. I recognize that voice. It's as airy as chiffon cake with a teasing inflection. And she's wearing a fucking school uniform, isn't she? Ah, ah I won't comment on that. <laughs> Belle. Did she just climb in through the window? If so, I didn't hear her. I'm torn between being impressed by her stealthy entry and perturbed. I'm sure there are more ladylike ways to enter a building. Couldn't you use the door? No way, that's boring. You'll be in trouble if you get caught. You might be mistaken for a burglar. A burglar? Yeah, right. What self-respecting burglar is going to break into a primary school music room? What is there in... What is there in here to steal anyway? <laughs> I suppose that's a fair point. I know, I'm full of them. Belle stands by the now open window, curtains flapping in the breeze as though she belongs here. A skirt dances around her thighs. Hey, that outfit. She grins and strikes a pose. Yes, do you like it? Oh, I like the little movement. It's a school uniform, the St. Catherine's uniform. I know, it's cute, right? I like the plaid skirt. I look her up and down, arms folded, eyes narrowed, like a real teacher. No teacher would look at their student like that, Robin, stop it. Well, I am a real teacher, so that isn't an act. Sometimes I almost forget myself. They'd never let you into St. Catherine's looking like that. What, with a tail butt plug? Oh, and why not? Is it because I'm so devilishly good looking? It's because your skirt is far too short. It should only be a few inches above your knees, not a whole foot. 
My, my, I'm so glad you noticed. It's a little hard not to. Again, emphasis on the hard, I guess. So, do you think I'm sexy? You can't tear your eyes away from my beautiful thighs, is that it? I'm just trying to look out for your modesty. You want to play at being the gallant knight, protecting your fair lady's honor? How touching. I never said you were a fair lady. Hmm, that might be true, not with this hair. She pinches a few strands of her hair between her fingers. It's pitch black against her white skin. Tar split, spilled across snow. That's again a strange figure of speech. A dark lady then? Doesn't that sound romantic? I'm not going to dignify with that with an answer. Meanie, you're no fun, and after I got all dressed up for you too. Yes, quite. And where did you get that uni uniform from exactly? Haha, <laughs> you humans are so cute, you ask such funny questions. What do you mean by that? I mean, I can conjure a human body for myself out of nothingness, but you are asking me about my clothes? Fitting together all the bones in my fingers, the muscles behind my eyes, the cells that circulate through my blood, is the hard part. The wrapping paper and ribbons that go around all that is easy. I could do it in my sleep. It's a fair point. Crafting clothes from thin air does sound a lot easier than summoning a living, breathing human body. Belle twirls, arms at her sides, examining her uniform. A far too short skirt flutters. I'm just struggling to understand why. Why what? Why you decided to wear a school uniform of all things? Do you really need to ask? Belle's eyes flash mischievously. It's because guys find it appealing. You do, don't you? He could never admit that as a teacher, you know? You're not just your average dude. Yeah, it can be fine. Especially if you're weep or something, I mean. Japanese media is full of school uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> but as a teacher? In a normie world? You don't admit that. I don't think we know one another well enough for this kind of conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're afraid of this being a big plot to get you in prison, aren't you? That's what you say, but I know otherwise. The school girl's outfit is more than just a uniform. It's a symbol of youth. An old man like it when young girls pay attention to them. It makes them feel wanted, needed, attractive. Right? Yeah, I guess that's one of the things why. <laughs> I turn my head away. I should be tuning the piano. I have a class in half an hour, and I don't know what I'll do if I can't tune the piano. Maybe I'll forego my grandiose plans and bust out the maracas instead. Little children like making noise. They'd probably enjoy that more than trying to wobble through the Lord is my shepherds, all out of tune, out of time. Oh, a piano! Fortunately, it seems the presence of this battered old Steinway has made Belle forget her previous line of inquiry. And it's a good thing too. There is a time and a place to discuss one's sexual fantasies, and lunch break in a music room, in a primary school no less, is not one of them. I agree. I'm more professional than that. Yeah, do it somewhere else. At night, on the bridge or something, but not here, please. Belle crosses the room in five neat steps, her silly skirt fluttering and takes a seat on the stool by the piano. Now, what is she playing at? You can play the piano? Of course, I'm a very accomplished spirit. Are you? Well, good luck playing this one, it's ancient. I was in the middle of tuning it when a certain somebody happened to climb in through the window and distract me. Really? How rude of them. They sound like a very naughty girl. Naughty girls need to be punished. They are fast becoming the bane of my existence. Well, I've always been of the opinion that naughty girls should be punished. I don't know if I should be happy about me saying it 20 seconds earlier. <laughs> Unfortunately, corporal punishment has been illegal for a long, long time. We're living in the 21st century now. Ah, what a pity, and I do so love being scolded. Mmm, Belle sighs and shrugs her shoulders, but the teasing smile on her face doesn't waver. Oh well, what can you do? If I can't be scolded properly in the manner to which I am accustomed, 
at least I can be praised 